Welcome, history enthusiasts, to a royal rendezvous. Today, we're delving into the regal realm to uncover the bizarre traditions that have adorned the lives of monarchs throughout history. Our first stop is the British royal family, where we find a curious and humorous custom dating back to the 18th century, the royal spoonerism. Now, this isn't your run-of-the-mill royal tradition. It's a playful word game where the initial sounds of words are swapped around, leading to some amusing linguistic twists and turns. Picture this, a regal figure adorned in all their royal finery, standing before a captivated audience. They open their mouth to speak, intending to convey the relief of a burden lifted. But instead of saying, the weight is off my shoulders, out comes, the weight is off my shudders. Now, isn't that a royal slip of the tongue to remember? Moving on, we step into the eccentric orbit of royal coronations. Picture this. The year is 1953 and a young Queen Elizabeth is about to ascend the throne. Preparations are in full swing and amidst all the pomp and pageantry, an unusual mission is underway. The objective, to keep the Queen's precious coronation robe pristine and the solution is, well, rather mothball. A rare breed of moth is bred not for its beauty or rarity, but for its diet. These moths, you see, are vegetarian. They wouldn't dream of nibbling on the Queen's robe. Yes, you heard it right. The royal entourage went to the lengths of breeding a rare species of moth just to ensure that no common moth would dare to snack on the royal attire. Who knew that behind the glitz and glamour of a coronation there was such a fluttering fuss? Talk about going to extreme lengths for regal moth protection. Now let's journey to Denmark, where graduation ceremonies attended by Danish royals take an unusual twist. This isn't your typical walk across the stage to receive a diploma. Here, the mortarboards fly high, and the higher the better. You see, Danish graduates have a tradition of throwing their hats in the air in a grand celebration of their academic achievements, but here's the royal twist. If a hat, by some stroke of luck, lands on a royal head, it's considered a sign of good fortune. Imagine the scene, a sea of hats soaring through the air, each one hoping to crown a royal. The royals, meanwhile, navigate this aerial spectacle with grace, perhaps even a touch of anticipation. It's a light-hearted tradition that adds a dash of royal whimsy to the serious business of graduation. A delightful blend of academia and aristocracy, wouldn't you say? It seems even monarchs can't escape the whimsy of a well-thrown graduation cap. Ah, uh, next up we travel back in time to the courts of medieval France. Here, humour was not just appreciated, but celebrated in the form of royal laughter contests. Monarchs would compete amongst themselves to see who could make their courtiers laugh the most. Picture a king, not on his throne, but on a makeshift stage, cracking jokes, or a queen performing a mime act, all in the spirit of jovial competition. This was not a mere pastime, but a courtly event where the stakes were high and the laughter was louder. The jesters, too, would partake in the jest, adding an extra layer of hilarity to the proceedings. The monarch, who could make their courtiers roar with laughter, was deemed the winner, and the royal court would echo with mirth and merriment. Picture this, a royal court erupting in laughter as jesters and monarchs engaged in good-natured merriment. And now for a regal romp that might leave you fluffed with disbelief, the great royal pillow fight of Bavaria. Picture this, every year the good folks of Munich mark the anniversary of King Ludwig II's coronation with an event that's more pillow pandemonium than pomp and ceremony. Yes, you heard it right, a pillow fight, but not just any pillow fight. This is a full-on, feather-filled frenzy that would make any monarch proud. The normally serene streets of Munich transform into a whimsical war zone as citizens armed with their softest weapons, engage in an epic battle of fluff and feathers. It's a sight to behold, as the air fills with the delightful chaos of a thousand pillows meeting their feathery fate. It's all in good fun, of course, a playful tribute to a king known for his eccentricities. Feathers fly as the city transforms into a playful battlefield fit for a royal spectacle. And with that, we wrap up our journey through bizarre royal traditions.